Today we're going to discuss five Rob Zombie characters that should have their own movies. Coming up on Said Talks Horror. <coughs> now when you think of a Rob Zombie movie, you often think about the trashy characters, the foul mouths, the carny barking, and long hair. Now, like them or not, Rob has created his own brand of horror which uses tons of suspense, atmosphere, tension with a good mix of unique sound and a whole lot of apathy devoid of hope. Now in his movies, it's hard to discern the good guys from the bad guys. And even the so-called good people are so repudiating that when they meet their grizzly end, you're mostly rooting for the bad guys. Now while Rob has a certain type of character, oftentimes one of the two steals the entire show. Only for that character to never be shown or heard from again. So, here are five Rob Zombie characters that we think deserve their own movies. Coming in at number five, Sick Head. Happy Halloween, motherfuckers! And quite frankly, he's a Spanish-speaking clown who is a little person, but he's also a Nazi serial killer? <laughs> yeah, let me repeat that. He's a Spanish-speaking clown who is a little person, but he's also a Nazi serial killer. Now, Sickhead is played by actor Panko Moeller in Rob Zombie's Gorefest 31. Sickhead is one of the many head characters that are used as torture devices to some random people trapped inside an old abandoned building. Now, in short, there are some random people who are kidnapped and forced to play a 12-hour game of survival. Now, all they have to do is stay alive from expert serial killers trying to hunt and kill them in the most barbaric way possible all to the enjoyment of some rich elites. Now, one of the serial killers is called Sickhead. Now, while he's small in stature, he's a knife-wielding murderer with a penchant for pain, sex, and death. Now, this is a character that I needed to know more about. Like, how did he come to be? What went wrong in this man's life? Like, what are the odds of finding a Hispanic serial-killing Nazi that worships Hitler? And no, I'm serious about that. There's a scene in this movie where this dude has a shrine of Hitler and on this shrine are a couple of dead mutilated bodies. Now, sort of in the vein what Rob did with Michael Myers, it would be interesting to see how this man became sick head. Now, this isn't something you see every day and we need to know more with a prequel to his story. But that's just me. What about you? And number four is Daryl the Chicken Lover. Now, y'all ain't planning on fucking these chickens, are you? Yes. If you think this sounds morbidly disturbing, <laughs> then that is exactly who and what I'm describing. Now, in Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects, there's a scene of a guy who sells chickens to Charlie and Cleavon. He's played by comedian Michael Alcott, a.k.a. Redbone. And although he's a chicken salesman, he's either hugely curious or has engaged in having sex with chickens. Now, how do we know this? He first tries to play it off cool that he's not into that. Then he goes on to a rant in vivid detail on how pleasing it would be to have sex with a chicken with his head freshly cut off. Now, if you haven't seen that scene, then you definitely should. Because I know Rob loves to throw black comedy into his movies. So, Rob, dude, we need to know more about Daryl's backstory. Like, how did he turn to chickens? What woman broke his heart? Like, this man is a bag full of questions you, Rob, need to answer. I mean, this is like a Rob Zombie style comedy that I think we need. You know, instead of doing the monsters, this is the story Rob should have told. But hey, that's me. What about you? Hey, did you know that this entire podcast is filmed, edited, and published on my cell phone? Well, if that's something you'd be interested in doing without all of the hassle, then click on the link in the descriptions so you can get every piece of equipment that I use. Now, back to the show. Now, up at number three is Dr. Satan. Dr. Satan! Ah, Dr. Satan! S. Quentin Quayle, a.k.a. Dr. Satan, is a murderer, surgeon, and a mad scientist. He first appears in Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses as nothing more than a tall tale as told by Captain Spaulding. You see, Spaulding would tell a story of how Dr. Satan would take these mentally handicapped patients who are on the brink of death and use them for his own little experiments to create a race of superhumans. Now, when the locals found out about his hobbies, they took him and hung him from a tree 
thus killing him. And that tree would be a point of emphasis where visitors would be led to in order to visit it. However, once they arrived at that tree, they quickly find out that Spalding led them there to be kidnapped and tortured by the Firefly family. But it isn't until our final girl of the movie escapes and that she finds an inhuman looking surgeon operating on people who are wailing in pain. That surgeon is none other than Dr. Satan himself, who at some point turned the knife on himself. And this character is played by veteran actor Walter T. Phelan. And this is one of Rob Zombie's most popular yet unexplored yet most beloved characters. I mean, his fandom has been dying to see more from Dr. Satan. And while the origins of this tale are often told differently based on the person telling the story, a proto-cult horror movie involving the origins of this mad genius is one that is definitely needed. Now, I know how I feel about it, but what about you? The number two Rob Zombie character that should have their own movie is Runny White. Bitch, I will crawl over there and I will skull fuck this shit out of you. If you've seen Rob Zombie's 2007 Halloween, one of the most standout characters is Runny White. Ronnie is the stepfather and I assume the live-in boyfriend of Michael Myers' mom. He's played by the lovable William Forsyth. Now, this guy is the most in-your-face Rob Zombie character ever created. Now, maybe you hate Rob Zombie's Halloween. Maybe you hate his work done with the shape. But I've never heard anyone say that they dislike Ronnie. He's like the best part of the first half of this movie. I mean, if there's one character that can define Rob Zombie as a creative, <laughs> it's Ronnie. I mean, he has this long hair. He's a trashy guy. So vulgar. I mean, he's the definition of a Rob Zombie character. But, but I know there's just a story to be told on how this guy became so pessimistic about everything. I mean, I would love to see a sort of black comedy of this guy before he met Mrs. Myers. Maybe he has another family and there's like this family guy dynamic that he has this crazy list of buddies who are comparable to him. I mean, with more Rob Zombie dialogue added into this, I don't know about you, but I'd 100% watch that. Like, I'd totally watch a Rob Zombie-esque family guy style movie with that character. But I got to know, would you be in that? Let us know in the comments. Now, before we get to our top spot, our honorable mentions include Gary Scott, heard a story about a couple of meat wagon boys fucking corpses over in Essex. I ain't never had the urge till tonight. Oh. Played by Richard Brake and Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, I just need to know this guy's story and like what led him to have this morbid fascination with sleeping with dead bodies. You just know that there's a descent in the madness waiting to be told. Like, come on, Rob, what are you waiting on? And Sheriff Waddell. You ever say another derogatory word about Elvis Aaron Presley in my presence again? I will kick the living shit out of you. Also played by William Forsyth, who made it in at number two with Ronnie White. Now, Sheriff John Quincy Waddell has the makeup and moxie of a proto Raylan Givens from Justified. I mean, you know that this guy has bodies and dealing with the scum that's in Rugsville. I said that his bodies are more than, <laughs> well, Justified. Rob. This is a story that need to be told. Fuck Groucho. And coming in at number one, the top Rob Zombie character that should have his own movie is Big Joe Grizzly. What we got here is failure to communicate. Yes, Joe Grizzly, besides being one of Michael Myers' most infamous victims, Joe is the guy whom Michael would kill and ultimately steal the iconic overalls that he's known for wearing. But the thing that makes Joe stands out is the fact that he didn't fear Michael during their epic battle. And up until this point was Michael's pound for pound toughest opponent. Now played by veteran actor Ken Forey, Big Joe Grizzly was a truck driver who stopped at a rest stop slash car wash near Haddonfield. He stopped to use the restroom there where he came across Michael Myers. Now, at first, he told Michael to go away while he was using the restroom. Michael, however, kept knocking on the door with Janard Grizzly, who got his knife out. And this is where we get the famous line. Let me introduce myself. I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch. So he opened the door and threatened to cut the mask off Michael's face. Michael burst into the restroom stall and fought with Grizzly, who tried to stab Michael with his knife. Michael slammed him against the wall multiple times, took the knife, and repeatedly stabbed him in the stomach until he died. Afterward, 
Michael stole Grizzly's coveralls. Now, while that scene was amazing, by the look, sound, and swagger of this man, there's definitely a story to be told about his life. I can imagine he was like a folk hero around town, maybe got tangled with some shady people, perhaps a few cricket cops and some seedy people in the underworld. I mean, this has a sort of black exploitation style movie written all over it, and I love to watch that with Rob at the helm, but that's just me. What about you? So let us know, did you like these choices? Would you want to see these characters in their own movies? Or are there other Rob Zombie characters you'd like to see? If we miss some, then let us know in the comments. And until next time, when said talks horror.